two, 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 two. One. Okay. A bit louder, please. A bit louder. Oh, thanks. A bit louder on the mic, please. Thank you. One, two, one, two. Much better. Thank you so much. Cool. Hello. Thank you all for coming. Um, if this is your first time, you are also welcome. Um, this is CDR, the Night of Ideas and Tracks in the Making, um, a community of wonderful people who are really connected to music making and geeking out about reverb tales, et cetera, et cetera. Um, joined here with um, someone who I've known for quite some time and um, very much part of the kind of CDR circa plastic people generation. Give it up for Wulu. Hi, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Working out the screen. How are you, sir? I'm good, man. Mad day, but I'm here, I'm cool. I'm alive. You get me? Survive the day. And it's quite useful quite about now to be to be alive and to be useful. Word. Yeah. To anyone that is thinking otherwise. <laughs> so you are, you know, you are part of this generation. Big up to Hector right about now. Um, My boy from day. My boy from day. Um, you know, in the days of physical CDs, mm. in, in the days of plastic people, you know, you all kind of like, uh, let's say, gr grew up together sonically. And it was really cool because you've all, you know, you're all interested in this, you know, kind of beat hybrid, alive, uh, sample acoustic aesthetic. But you've all got, a s you know, all got your a very personal take on it. Definitely. So it's been really cool to see how you've all kind of, you know, grown and evolved, you know, um, you know, kind of, and it's been kind of a good kind of cumulative build. Um, Bless. So take us back to say from 2012 when Plastic um, kind of like, you know, left us, so to speak. Word. Um, where, have you, where have you gone from there? Since then. Um, pretty much just kept it around where I started making music. And it was always, I mean, it always kind of came in bits. So coming up making tunes it was mainly I was like always obsessed with this the NPC and I was always like looking to find a cheap one on eBay or something like that so once I got that I just started just straight hip-hop sort of vibe so around then it was kind of like beatsy and almost like dubstep vibes and me Hector and Visionist and Foundational we run a label called 92 points way back and around then it was all about sort of making I guess down tempo dance music and trying to kind of keep it on the sort of more tribal side of dubstep. Um, and then since then, um, as I was sort of like carried on making beats, uh, it, was, it was actually Hector from a long time ago, because I, I used to play guitar and bass in school. And he was like to me, why don't you ever play bass on your music? <laughs> I was like, I don't know, <laughs> actually. Because you get caught up in that mindset of just making beats and dubstep and computer-based stuff. And I never really thought about bringing the other element into it because before I got into like jungle and hip hop, my main love was like Red Hot Chili Peppers, Smashing Pumpkins, things like that. So, and then obviously, like along the line, being from like Brixton area, I never really knew anyone that was into sort of like Flying Lotusy stuff. And so me and Hector kind of like sort of got into that together. And then I started meeting like minded people and started hearing like, um, like this guy, Reese G, he put me onto like the deeper side of like Flying Lotus and all the instrumentation stuff that he was doing. And I, that just blew my mind. And I was just like, you know what? After a while, I was just like, I need to stop looking at a screen. Because I don't know if I like you lot, but it just gets jarring after a while when you're just like this all the whole time. So I was like, yeah, let me just start writing music on the guitar and use the sample based stuff. And sometimes I'll sample something and then sort of run it through Ableton and then but once I've built it up to a point with loads of instruments and be and drums and that, I'll just sort of take out the sample maybe, or just mash it up enough so it doesn't even really feel like there's a sample in there. Yeah. So since so since them kind of days, I've just kind of been trying to develop that really, and just trying to take it as far as far as I can. I mean, it's really cool that you know you, you know, I mean, there's something great about having one's roots in beat-based music, but at some point, whether you work with musicians or if you 
reconnect with your kind of music, musician sh self. You know, it's a really good way of kind of almost like creating your own identity because at the end of the day, you've created the riff, you've created the bass line or whatever and you've yeah. recorded it yeah. and you've got the option of keeping it as it is or sampling yourself and yeah, transforming exactly. it, you know? So, um, so for those of us who haven't actually used an MPC, um, mm -hmm. you know, what, you know, why should someone, you know, you know, battle you on the old eBay bids? <laughs> um, um, well, I kind of felt once I, st once I got it, and started using it, I just took my computer away and just plugged the speakers straight into here. And it just, for a time, for maybe a month or so, I spent like, like a week on YouTube working out how to use it. And I was just like, I'm using my ears so much more. And even if it was just like, I don't know, like, you know, Mad Lib style, when he's just, there's some of the beats that he's made that are just, just on this. And it's just like two or three loops with a drum beat, but the way he's pitched it and the way he swung the drums, I'm sitting there thinking, oh, this is nuts. But when I'm in front of a computer, I'm just like looking at, looking at it thinking, does it look finished rather than does it sound finished? So that's kind of what I got mostly from that. Spending a lot of time trying to like do what I knew people did on it, like making beats, hip hop sort of stuff. And then just really just trying to take it weird basically. Yeah, <laughs> just trying to... So sample and then just make it weird. Yeah. And just take, just it, take it to different places. Yeah, just try and mm. use it for what it's not used for. Okay. Sometimes. So is there a relationship between, you know, there's definitely something about the tactility of the MPC, but then at one, p at one point you decide, you know what, I need to, you know, reacquaint my MPC with the Ableton. Yeah. And then what role does the Ab Ableton play or the audio or the MIDI yeah. stuff? Mm. Well, to be honest, I didn't, um, I haven't, I've only recently started syncing my... MP to the to the laptop like time based over like the last couple of years, um, but before it was just kind of like I've made a beat and now I'm gonna stem it out and take it further because because it was more like uh, I wasn't getting what I wanted out of it fast enough, so I was just like oh yeah this sounds cool this is kind of like a cool idea that I could develop more in here so once I started kind of getting away from the idea of just making sort of beats, even though you can do much more in this, which I've learned um, over time. But yeah, it, it was around that sort of moment where I was just like, you know, I want to I wanna take the low end out and just really put a nuts effect on it and then side chain it and then do lots of other bits to it and then m maybe reverse it and then make some more tracks. But I couldn't do that as fast as I, as I wanted to, so I just stem it out. Yeah, so I guess in it, it's, it, it, pl it plays a role in your kind of composi you know, compositional process. Definitely. But definitely once it's in a computer, you've got so many more options sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, so th that's cool. Um, what do you find frustrating about um, your current setup? Well, this this is sort of like my bedroom. This is what I have in my, in my bedroom. Um, it's, it's cool. I just find it li a little bit limiting in terms of like, as I'm saying, because I'm in a lot more of a live headspace these days, I, I only take it to a certain point until I take it to my studio and then, then get my boy Quake to drum in it or something or get some guys to play extra keys or th you know that sort of thing. I mean, it's limiting to the point in which I guess I don't really find it negative because there are times in which like, it, it just does what it needs to do and, and there are times where I, I don't want to take it any, any further. But... I guess sort of mixing down in this sort of sort of setup wasn't really ever really intended. I guess I just use it for writing, and it isn't really a negative thing. I mean, I guess the most negative thing is when the fucking MIDI doesn't work, <laughs> and things start messing up, and you're there, you have an idea, and you're sitting there like, why is it not, <laughs> why is it not doing the thing I need it to do? I've got the idea, and then you know you c it can step away and blah blah blah. All and that. relax and breathe. Yeah, and then miraculously it works again. Yeah. Somehow, sometimes. I mean, this is an old laptop, man. I, I have to keep it on charge. I don't know if you guys know about that one, but you know, got to keep the charger on as long as that stays orange. We're good. And, and, com <laughs> and command S, command S, quite regularly, right? Yeah, all of that. Mm -hmm. Save. Yeah. The minute you start seeing the wheel, you're like, <laughs> okay. Uh, if it goes away, I'm saving straight away. It's trying it down. Restart. All right, we're cool. Fresh start. <laughs> I guess technicals is the most exactly. biggest hiccup in this cell. 
So you've got here an NPC 2000, 1000, right? Yeah. 1000, yeah. yeah. Ableton 9, right? Yeah. 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 Nine and then seven. audio interface, nice, simple. And then you've got a guitar with us. Um, yeah. You didn't bring the bass today, but that's fine. Yeah. Annoyingly. But, you know. That's okay. It is what it is. So show us, show us how you do your thing. All right. Um, I'm just going to sort of give you an idea of what a sort of half finished track sounds like that I've made. This is pretty much from my room. And I think, yeah, um, yeah. So, so, so I think it's a sample-based tune. And at this point, I'll probably take it to the studio and work on it more. So let's see what it's saying. Oh. So this is what it's saying. It's <laughs> it's saying this. <laughs> He wants to come, he'll spit some bars in here. Is it your bad? It's me, isn't it? <laughs> I've soloed something, haven't I? But of course. Of course. I'm surprised that someone didn't spot it earlier. You know yeah, that, you got the solo on, bro. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So this is still rough, rough, rough. I wouldn't even, you know. I wouldn't even. This is CDR, this. man. You know, it's all, all right, about working. You know. You know, you got to do, do the disclaimer in it. Yeah. like a little thing sound <laughs> feel um, free feel free to break down every nook and cranny okay <laughs> um the drum shuffle uh pff, i mean you know when you're in the v you're when you're in it oh, it's you in it asking them questions <laughs> um so actually one thing that you put me on to that guy in the corner, Mr. Mr. Andrew. Andrew Shong, everyone. Um, is a little thing. So a lot of the time, I haven't done it on this actually, but I would use the sort of delay push to make the swing sort of off beat or on on beat. You know, like sort of. Is that on the channel? It's on the. So in Ableton, on the channel, you've got yeah, this little D yeah. at the bottom. Cool. It, okay. It just kind of pushes the latency. It kind of like if you've got something late uh, in terms of like if you're using a, a MIDI keyboard and it's a bit it's a bit late, you could just change that to make it shift left or right. 
but I use that sometimes just to push the drums. Um, that sort of more thing. laid back, yeah. Yeah, or make them, yeah, make the groove sort of sit with the bass line and that sort of nudging. So this is um, a sample that I clocked from my friend Quake from our studio, and we were just jamming, and I just we just do loads of jams sometimes, and I just take bits and pieces. So this is him just getting busy on the drums. So I would use it for like an idea to sort of write a melody round and maybe write some lyrics, maybe write a bass line. Um, and then over that, what have we got here? A bass line. More, more time, it would pretty much be bass, drums, and I would make a lot of it, a lot of the sort of melody off the bass guitar. I think I did it on this one actually. <laughs> So, oh, my cable's getting dirty. Cool. So that would have been like the, if I was at home getting lit up, that would be <laughs> the vibe for like maybe an hour. I'll just be there, just like, yeah, this is sick. And then I'll probably, most of the time, I would get, I would get pieces of it. So I think maybe I did, yeah, so. I'll probably get the mic like this out and just put my hood up, turn off the lights and just get all vocally. Oh! <laughs> Switch it up. Sorry about that. Oh, it's clear, it's clear on. Sound. Oh, I've got two. Okay. I just won't move. Oh, am I still here? Thinks the cable, so let's just use this mic. Sound. I'll just give that one to you, G. Sound. Um, yeah, so I would just kind of start with the bass melody and sort of start demoing vocals. So this would have been a little vocal harmony thing. Top of the bass line. And I think this was a sort of synth line that I was jamming with, so this is probably part of it. So usually, I'm a I'm a real advocate for sort of like getting the loop going, jamming and jamming with, with myself. And Ableton, as most of you know, is really good for that. So that would have just been a vibe for like a good hour or so. And I might have come back like the next day and, and then listened to it and then added these little key biz. Roads, love their roads. <laughs> so, oh yeah, so what I've, what I've done in here is usually, I don't know if a lot of you know about it, but if you've got a break in, um, in uh, Ableton, you can warp it and you can set markers along it, like, like I've, I think I've rebounced this, and take the groove to the fatten up the drums. So that's that's mimicking the break. Uh, so yeah, slightly, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just duplicate the, the grooves, just to kind of give it like a nice fat feel, so. Um, yeah, and I, and usually I'll just make a sort of like little loop and then sort of make a really intense one with loads of layers and then just sort of break it up over the song and then start writing lyrics and stuff. I mean, that's my process, but it sometimes can happen in 10 minutes or sometimes it's going to happen in six months. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I'm, I'm quite an advocate of sort of like, you know, taking your time and making sure it's right. Let's see what I've got here. Yeah, so what I would have done is to sort of chin up the sections and sort of make it more of a song, because that's what I'm kind of in, getting more into, is just I want to write songs rather than writing just beats. Cause I, I love writing beats, but I can't rap in it, so I'm not really trying to rap on my stuff. I want I, I want to sing and play guitar and that, so um, I would have added sort of like progressive stuff to make the, the listener sort of keep interested in that. So this would have been like a layer of uh, different uh, percussive stuff. And maybe some... 
shirt. Yeah. And I guess these are all just like recordings from your studio or you know from your from your main studio or from your um you know kind of smaller studio. That, that probably would have just been in my room. I just, you know, right next to the mic, you know. Um, yeah, that would have been that. Um but on some vibes, you know, if I'm chilling with some mates or whatever, uh, at the other studio, it, it can turn into a whole other thing, you know. And I think that's really important in, with working with music, because I mean, for the longest time, I've been working solely on my own and just doing little bits and pieces. Oh, can you play that? Can you play this? Because I was always kind of like, had a weird headspace of like, I've got an idea and I really want to execute it. But I feel like uh, after doing it for so long, I've just been like, being more open and getting more people involved on a sort of idea that you might have just really opens up your thinking a lot more and yeah I've, i want to do that more when i've been trying to and also it's that thing where um you know you're working with elements right do you know what i mean and it's, it's it's like a sum of all parts so if someone comes up with a with an element whether it's a bass sound or a shaker part it's about how it works it's about creating context for it, do you know what I mean? Rather than going, no, that doesn't work. It's like, okay, how can I make it work? So it's a, it's a lot more, um, and I get the, se the sense that you're really, I won't say, I won't say happy-go-lucky, but it feels like you're very happy, you've got happy-go-lucky approach to writing elements for tracks. I get the sense that it's all about layers, trying things out, whether it takes two minutes or two years. <laughs> But 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 it's all about just bringing it together at some point. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's that's exactly you got it nailed it on the head. That's exactly the vibe. I mean, I've got tunes that I put out on my last project that were like eight, like they were just bits. And when the pressure came around to put it out, I was just like, okay, so that's I like that. That makes me feel good. So I'm just gonna, you know, hammer it till it's complete. You know? But some of them might have been like an idea from years ago or. There might even be a song where I've heard one piece, a vocal bit or a melody or whatever, and I'll just take that one piece and make a whole tune just straight away. It's weird because it's like going back to the old songs and old loops and old little vibes. Just really put, like sometimes can either put you in a different headspace or bring you right back in it and then you're instantly just like, <gasps> oh yeah, done. <laughs> it's like, um, I don't know if you've seen that episode of Malcolm in the Middle when uh, the dad paints. I don't know if anyone's seen that. Basically, he just like I, the, I remember the guy from Breaking Bad, but um, he <laughs> <laughs> that guy, he's just at he just he gets really into painting to the point where he's pouring paint on himself and he's smashing it on the wall and everything, and then everyone w wants to see his piece of music and um, his piece of art, and he's like, no, 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 I can't, I can't let you do it until he just one day he's just he's stressing out and throwing all this shit at the at the wall, and then he just goes, it's done. <laughs> And then the, f the whole thing obviously falls on him, doesn't it, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, it's that kind of vibe, you know, that's totally my headspace, I guess. <laughs> but don't you, um, I mean, apart from having deadlines to accelerate finishing things, don't you kind of like have a demon, you know, or kind of like a part of your consciousness that goes, look, you're being long, man, you know, just get it done, get it done. <laughs> He's here right now, bro. <laughs> hey, seriously. That is, I feel like that's every, every producer's or music maker's creator's struggle, man. Because there is always, even tunes I put out, I'm just like, they ain't even done. You know what I mean? Like I've still, there's still something to be done. O always, there's always that that shoulder demon telling me shit to like finish and, you know, stressing myself out. You know what I mean? T to the point in which, like, you know, today was a mad one to get here just because I had to, I had to go so many places to do with, you know, music shit that I've, you know, the pressure is like, you gotta get this shit sorted out. So I'm like, right. <sighs> so yeah, I mean, that's always there, constantly, constantly. But I think, I, I kind of feel like it's, in some ways it's progressive, in some ways it kind of keeps me on my toes, keeps me up late a lot of the time, you know, it keeps me sort of like, keep my ears and eyes open. But I guess, you know, we all need rest, we all need, our bodies need sort of like chill out time. Um, because some of the some of the my, my, my most favorite music that I've made have, has been when I've not been in London. I've just been like in a 
when my phone isn't ringing and my internet's not working and I'm just in a random place you know, or someone's apartment that in a random part of the country like and that's where the demon almost like quiets and quietens down. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't yeah, he chills out. He chills out of the countryside. He's like tranquil. I guess, you know, living in London but we're in such a fast paced place and it's really hard to concentrate a lot of the time. And there's always this I mean, that's why I come I come off Facebook, Instagram, all of that shit, just because like that's another pressure to say you need to finish it when really I, I wanna do it to make myself feel good over anything else. Yeah. <laughs> um, you'll have to answer, answer questions, of course, of course. Um, but before we do, um, I really get the sense that, you know, apart from the want to finish complete work, um, a lot of the time producers struggle with obviously compositional elements, but when that's kind of done, then you've got arrangement to deal with, and then, you know, once that's done, you've got the mix down, the mastering to deal with. It's almost like stress upon stress upon stress upon stress. But I get the sense of you that it's almost like it's a, your approach to writing and production and mixing is a holistic thing. I get the sense that, am I? As in, as in you're approaching the whole thing at one point. So it's a bit like, so I get the sense that when you're writing and composing, it, you're, it's almost ready rather than you having, okay, and now, now it's time to mix. I get the sense that you're building something. It's almost like clay. Do you know what I mean? Like pottery. Yeah. So when you're building the sound, you know, you're mixing as you're going, you're sound designing as you're going. So when you're close to it being finished, you don't like have to zero the faders and go, okay, I'm mixing now. You're pretty much, okay, it's working now. Let's put it to bed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I hate mixing and I hate mastering to do it personally because by the time I've got to that point, my ears are so fatigued to work out what's too loud or what's not. So I just, but I'm, as you say, I'm, mix, I'm, I'm kind of leveling things as I go. But most of the time, mixing isn't that hard when someone else is doing it because I'm sitting in a different perspective. I'm like sitting there while someone else is tweaking and doing things that I know that should be done, but I, for some reason, I just can't, I know that something needs to happen, but I can't work out which bit it is. And you know, I was with um, this guy yesterday, and he was mixing a tune, and he just cut some low end out, out of the drums and boosted the snare. So I was like, oh, "That's it! That's it! You've done it! I don't, I don't, I didn't, I didn't even really realize that that's what I need to do, but but you heard it and you managed to do it. So at, yeah, at mixing stage, I'm just kind of like, I've got, I've taken it as far as I can uh, sonically. And uh, and yeah, you know you get that loop itis, man, where you just hear it too much, and it's just oh, it's raw headspace. But with that said, it's about having a trust where you know someone, an engineer or a mix engineer who knows your sound and knows what you're going to go for. Yeah, it's obviously super important, right? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Who's got a question they'd like to ask or comment? Go for it. I think. Yeah. Hold on. Let's try to get this. You mentioned about wanting to go to more like songwriting and compositional. So what do you need to change in your approach to making music to do that? What's, what's the difference? What are you not doing that you want to do now? Because like obviously this is like beat based, but like what else do you want to do then? And how do you approach? Um, I pretty much at the minute, I've literally just been focused on writing on the guitar. Before I even touch anything, I'm just trying to write a hook, a song, something that I enjoy listening to. Just from the idea of when I work with singers and other people, they might come to me with literally just a song on the guitar. And I'm like, okay, let's work out how to do this. So I'm trying to put myself in that same headspace. Um, and also, I've tried, oh, I'm, I'm doing like sort of working with other producers like almost like I'm the artist being produced, but because I'm because I know what I need to do on the on the door, I we can have the relationship that I have with the producer is a lot different. I can kind of say this is how I want to do it, this is my song, but maybe they got better gear or things like that. So to approaching like treating myself like a band 
when I'm going into with a producer or just writing it strip solely on one instrument or even the piano, things like that. And then taking the song and applying those verses and sections just with how I would make a track in Logic. I mean, uh, Ableton or Logic. That's kind of how I'm doing it. So more just solo, solo gits. <laughs> Thank you, great question. Anyone else? Okay, take your time, that's fine. There's lots of time. Um, oh, now, okay, go for it. about doing like songs versus beats almost like do you think that uh, is the audience that is starting to listen to what you're doing changing because of you feeling like you're changing what you're creating a bit or do you think is it is it staying the same you know like does that open you up to different things I totally hear what you're saying I mean to be honest I haven't really met or really gauged a lot of the people that listen to my music. So I wouldn't, <laughs> sick. Uh, um, and so I don't even really know, but I've got, I mean, I feel like cause I, I'm a twin. My I got a twin brother and he does music too. And because we kind of share friendship groups and that sort of thing, I get people from sort of my kind of crew uh, and sort of people who listen to that sort of hip hop and that sort of thing into the stuff. And also, because my, my brother is sort of like more guitar-based music, I get a lot of his mates getting in, like mentioning stuff as well. But I feel like there's so much like crossover um, with what I'm doing anyway, generally in music. Um, so I guess I'm not. I haven't met them, but I would assume that people who were into like my first thing, which is just straight beats and stuff. Uh, could be a bit shocked with for the next for the one that came before, but the one that the stuff that's coming is even further. It's even further, you know. So I think that is when I'm gonna know if the sort of hip hop heads are gonna be into what's really like what's com coming later on down the line. Am I conscious about leaving people behind with the? I'm aware of it. I guess, but at the same time, I'm, I'm not thinking about it because I, I find that when I start thinking about like those sort of pressures, my music would, won't come out the way I, w I, w I feel it, and I feel like if they're not into it, that's cool. I mean, I'm totally making music just for myself, <laughs> so if they're into it, cool. But I'm conscious of it, but I'm not. I'm open to the sort of like conversation about it, and. I, I, and like I, I kind of want that because it's nice to be able to s explain to someone um, what I what I was into before. Before, like some people, some people know me as a drum and bass DJ. Some people know me as a hip hop producer. Some people know me as a singer songwriter. But that's just like wherever you met me on my life, you know. Next year I might just be on some ambient thing, <laughs> some you know, like Aphex man, Aphex the God. Do you know what I mean? He's this, he's on it like that piano record he did. You know, ambient works, all of the far out shit, you know, it's brilliant. Just with it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think at the end of the day, it all stems to the fact that, you know, we're all, we're all artists at the end of the day and we're using music as a, as a form of expression, you know, and you don't want to be restricted by, you know, what the followers you've got on SoundCloud or, you know, whatever, you know. Um, but it does come with its challenges. I want to get back to the arrangement a little bit. Are you starting something new? Not yet. You sure? You can if you want. We don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I felt like let's let's let's. I was, what I was going to do is obviously you're working with stems and there's obviously a m few MIDI clips there. But let's talk a little bit about the kind of plugins that you use um, when you're actually putting together your sound. So, do you have any like go to? Um I mean, most of I I've got. Like loads of plugins, but I don't even really use half of them, man. Oh yeah, I've got like uh, I feel like every producer has Waves, Sound Toys, that sort of thing. I found this really, 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 really good though. Um, Addictive Drums. When I was trying to write sort of like 
just more live stuff. And I don't know, I was in my room. This helped me so much. This is great. Because you can use like MIDI stuff and then you or you can just sort of get like loops to sort of write a song around. I mean that's something that, that really, really helped me out when when I when I didn't have access to sort of recording drums. I used to annoy my neighbour a lot. Um I put a drum kit in my in my bedroom one time and just for about six months was just trying to learn trying to learn drums. <laughs> so then and, and then he got so pissed off I got this, so <laughs> it worked out. It was a gift from him, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was just like, have you heard of addictive drums, mate? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, one of them. Uh, our, our free plug is actually, um, this one is like my go-to for everything. Uh, when, I want, when I want to make things knock. This is the uh, Audio Damage uh, Rough Rider. This is free, you can get it off their website. But Mind Design put me onto this. He's gonna actually kill me for even Shit, you know, but he was like, "Don't, don't, blood." <laughs> but I'm telling all you, so I mean, it's free in it, you know. But this is fucking sick. I'll give you a little example. So um, let me get a little loop quickly. Loops. All right, cool. Let's drag this in quick, and then we'll get the rough rider. All right, so. These drums sound. Oh shit! Sorry. <laughs> this is the drums without them on. And instantly, when I turn this up, I mean that's all you need, isn't it? <laughs> you know? Huh? That's just out the gate, man. <laughs> That's just like me turning down the sensitivity. <laughs> and I mean, I, sp I think I speak for a lot of hip hop heads. The drums in it. <laughs> I could literally listen to that all day. <laughs> literally. So that's what, one of my favorite plugins. Um, I used the, the Monopoly a little bit and the Poly X, Poly 6, sorry. Yeah, that's great for like sort of weird, I use it mainly for um, sort of weird road sounds. They've got this really nice one. Uh, Whirly, yeah, this one, this is banging. Um, yeah, just, I mean, I haven't got my MIDI keyboard, guys, so I'm a bit unprepared by like that. All right, let me go, yeah. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> 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 Uh, you know what, I'll, I'll drag a little MIDI loop in there. I'll make it interesting. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, that's great. So I usually use that and my favorite sort of effect as well, bar sort of like dynamic, dynamic effects, would be the sound toy stuff. So all of this stuff is brilliant, man. I suggest getting it, man. I think it was on discount a few weeks ago. There you go. It will be Black, uh, Black Friday. Don't even, that's not even. Um, <laughs> but my favorite one is the Crystallizer. That is brilliant. Just mix it sound <laughs> out of the gate, do you know what I mean? <laughs> You know, brilliant. Uh, so I usually flip through these, and I just I love resampling. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll just kind of get this, and then make a. So I would record uh, that into a new audio channel, and probably put probably like really make it really annoyingly affected. So it'll probably get. Uh, So yeah, I'll record like a piece of that, usually. <laughs> I'll need to put it on record. So 
so I'll do, I'll like, you know, as I'm saying, I'll be lit at home <laughs> doing this for hours. So even if, the, like, you know, that, that uh, to me, I think to most people, sounds a bit next. But I, would, I, w I, I wouldn't let me, that stop me. I would just keep affecting it. So I'll probably just drag out a part of this. All right, so instantly I'm like, cool. That could be something. That first bit. And then maybe I'll pitch it. And I'll be like, right, cool. Harmony time. So I'll duplicate it. And then I'll throw it here. Probably put another another little sound toys biz on there. And then around that sort of time, let's take that again a bit. Uh, cool. So imagine that I'm just literally in my room personal wave. So I'd sync it. Thank you.
So at that kind of point, I would start compressing it and start sort of side chaining most of the ambient stuff, the adding vocals and the bass line and that sort of vibe. So that's like a little snapshot into how I'd start layering up shit. But yeah, I, like, I didn't expect to do that, but I just thought I might as well run with it. Do you know what I mean? I think it's to safe to say we were with you there, so it's all good. Give it up for Miles, man. This is just, this is just amazing. <laughs> so it's really reassuring to see that actually you don't know what you're doing. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? You, do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, yeah. So it's all about just taking inspiration from the tools that you've got around you, creating loops, creating textures, and then at some point it will make sense. There's something really powerful about that, right? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I do a lot of youth work. So when I'm in this, when I'm in like the youth club, and they're like, "Make me a beat," I'm like, "All right, let me, okay." <laughs> so I'm doing it, and they're behind me like, "No, bro, doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound." Right. I'm like, "You need to give me like at least 45." to just get to a place, you know? Um, because yeah, half the time, I mean, I can get by on the guitar, I can get by on the keys. I, d I play the bass, so that's like, I, I can play that, you know what I mean? But most of the time, it's just sort of freestyle. And I, I'm not afraid to just sort of, I, I used to just, before um, I had a demo version of JJOS on my, on my MPC, and I, that means that you can't save. So I used to, used to make beats, for like hours and then just be like, right, that's practice, let's turn it off, you know? And, oh shit, I just turned it off. <laughs> and I've lost the sample, fuck it, right? Um, so yeah, I used to do that a lot. Um, but I kind of feel like there's something to be had, or something to be said for that. Because uh, one time I was in rehearsal, uh, I don't know if you guys know, uh, the guy, the synth player, Dave Kaur, he's in a few, uh, I think called Modified Man, he runs a label called Albert's Favorites, that to put his release out on, fucking sick Don. And he was saying to me that he's a classically trained pianist and it was he found it really hard to get into a headspace of like just kind of like randomly putting things together. Uh, yeah, he, he, yeah, exactly. And he was talking about Premiere and how the Premiere would just put random samples together that what you wouldn't necessarily think like chord wise or structure um scale wise would or key wise would work but there's just beauty in it like i was with kobe the other day and he was just like they we were talking about music and talking about how good it is to be able to express what you're saying in the moment because he was like there is dirt and beauty and there's beauty and dirt and i was just like bruv you made my fucking day with that man because I, mean, I feel like i feel like that's I mean, that's how this was created, or that's how this was created, by an accident, or by like a small idea that just kind of came from some kind of influence. Yeah. I'm trying to hold on to that as much as possible. I mean, that's, that's definitely clear. And also just this idea that, you know, it's about, it's about, it's, a, it, it's composition in the sound sense, not necessarily in the kind of classical harmonic scale sense, you know what I mean? So you had all these layers and effects and elements that you're gonna basically create a great comp with it all at some point, do you know what I mean? And that's super powerful because a lot of us who have grown up with working in a door, it's all about starting up bar one and then you do the intro and then the breakdown, then the chorus, then the drop or whatever, do you know what I mean? But this is just, uh, you know, it's a completely different way of working because you'll get to that point at some point. But when you actually just come in with the, I come with the elements, just to do your thing, just, just take inspiration from what you're hearing and recording and deal with that stuff later. No, that's really cool. It's really powerful. Um, questions for you guys. You get question here. Yeah. So, what I like about your stuff is that you incorporate like guitar and bass. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> you incorporate like guitar and bass in your music and stuff, and I think that's not that common with like, especially with like electronic music based sort of stuff. So. I'm just curious as like, how do you use those influences in your music? Like what are your favorite guitarists and or bassists and how do they influence what you make? Like what are your thought processes behind? I don't know if you like, I'm assuming you like Hendrix. How does he influence your music or, you know, you know, so. Um, pretty much, to be honest, some of my biggest influences in terms of um, 
because as I said before, it was always it was always quite separate. It was like that's guitar music, this is beats music, and there isn't really much crossover. But a lot of the influence, most of the influ guitar based stuff influence I got was from um, sort of Red Hot Chili Peppers and Nirvana and thing like the real grunge side of guitar music. And as I've got older, like singer songwriters, like you know like Alex G, Sandy, Alex G, it's this folk guy. I like love it. Like he's so brilliant, man. And just the way and you know what, bruv? Frank Ocean. Frank Ocean, bruv. That when I heard Channel Orange, me, me and my friend Denisha sat in my garden for about six hours listening to it on loop. Cause I was like He's he isn't taking the sort of he's writing songs and writing pop tunes and all that sort of thing, but that album is so musical and it's got so m and it makes reference to all those uh, all those sort of things like you know Jimmy and Havana and um, sort of like I guess rap and pop music and all that sort of thing. Um, I think yeah I think he was a massive influence, but to be honest, a lot of it was along the way meeting people that used the used their sort of guitar or their bass as as like a basis so like when i saw thundercat doing singing playing bass and singing i in my mind i was like the only person i seen that do uh, uh, do that what's the bass play with the bald head a lady she usually wears like a wife beater sort of vest she got a root big big that proper like took me out. So I think, yeah, I mean, Flea was like my guy when I was growing up, man. Flea was like, I just wanted to be able to slap the bass. And uh, and um, I told my dad, I was, I was like, this tune, and like, I think it was like one of the first, like, early, really early albums. I was like, I want to be able to play this. And it was literally, like when I found out later, it was literally him just riding up the E string, just going boom, 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 boom. And I was like, yeah, I, just, I don't know what it was, but the way, he, like, because he looked kind of nuts, and he was just like, dum, 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 dum. I was like, I want to do that. I want to do that, you know. Um, but, you know, along the way, as I said, not meeting a lot of people that were into the same music, um, I guess most of my influences was from, like, my friends, most of the time. Like, when I met, when I met Mr. Ashon, absolutely brilliant producer, absolutely really, like, diverse with how he's bringing... Uh, beats and his sort of singer songwriting together as well when we linked up it was just like oh my god this is what i'm saying Ralph. you know this is brilliant man <laughs> you know so i guess like a lot of that and you know and, and hector as well with like the way hector has always had his own sound from when we were but when we were using reason me and hector used to make we used to in a crew, a crew called monsters playground we used to make beats together but he always had a way of rolling his snares and rolling his drums so just, I guess, yeah, just everyone's different style around me just thought, just made me more and more confident to just cross-collaborate the idea of making it weird and guitar-y. Um, I guess, I guess um, the biggest sort of like grunge sort of elements of where I'm trying to take it with um, the guitar stuff, I guess it's like, you know, like the, the obvious ones, like being the beats guy of, of of the of Nirvana or some shit, you know, or just being like really heavily influenced by like like the Damned shit like that. That's where I'm at in my head. But I'm open, man. Like you know, at, at, at some stage in my life, I was definitely like only drum and bass, only hip hop, only this. But I guess just from growing up and hearing like loads of different influences, and actually a lot of, a lot of um, Afrobeat as well, actually, because my dad plays trumpet and. Um, he does a lot of Afrobeat uh, sort of reggae influence stuff. So that's always been, all that sort of high life guitar-y stuff has always been like in the back. So when I, when, um, uh, I started hearing, um, oh, what is his name? You know, like, um, what's that label? Africa, um, no, uh, they, they do all the reissues. Awesome Takes from Africa. They put out a record that my mate brought around and it was just a black, it's like a black record, but with this like big white sticker in the middle of this like dude playing a synth, but it was, it was all blue. But in that record, I'm just trying to describe it. If anyone knows the name, you can <laughs> tell me, because I lost the record. 
But um, his that record was just totally like high life guitar with drum machines, but like in a really, it wasn't like a high life tune. It was like really kind of like left field high life, and I was just like, that spoke to me just from sort of having influences from my dad and that, you know. So I guess just along the way, friends and family really, I guess, to conclude. <laughs> I can chat for ages, man. No, we like it. Um, anyone else? Cool. So what's next for you, release-wise? Do, do you have a deadline? I have a deadline. I've missed all those deadlines. <laughs> but yeah, new year, new year I'm gonna I'm gonna drop some stuff. Um yeah, it's it's this whole finishing thing, man. Like I've got ideas and I've got things on my computer that I like, but I just know that I that you know, it, I just don't want to do myself a disservice. Sure. And I'm just and I, that can get in the way of time scales. <laughs> A lot, you know. Do you find there's a there's a habitual block? Do you know what I mean? Like when it comes to finishing things off, is there like th a particular thing? So what happens is, I'll make a tune, I'll get it to the point of like demoing the vocal and stuff, and get it to the point where like I know I've got to sort of redo it all. Like I redo the vocals, and I've got to make this bit cleaner, and I've got to redo that bit. But once I get to that at that point, I never do it. I always just, I'm, I'm always like, right, that's kind of done. So the last bit will just be cleaning it up. But the, the block comes every single time. I'll make something that I like after like six, seven tunes, I'll make something that I like. And then I know it's back to the beginning of like, no, like a month of like, <laughs> and then one thing will happen in the instant and then I'll do it. And then it will be back to the square one every time. I guess maybe if, if I think about it, um, to I, I guess it's because I'm thinking about it, basically, is what's holding my thing back. But I always try and see if I, if, if I can carry on the vibe um, as soon as I can. But that that's that seems to be what it is. I mean, apart from you know commitment phobia, which we all have, you know, um, I think there's something around just taking leaf out of Mad Lib's book and just just it's more about output. Do you know what I mean? And you know, you know, we all know Madlib's music, and we all know he's got about three trillion tracks out there. They've all got different levels of energy, production aesthetic. They've all got a, a sound, but they're all different, and we accept them all. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You know, so maybe that's something around that for all of us. Do you know what I mean? You know, of course, we want to release music that we're very happy with and quote unquote perfect or it's the best. Of it, you know, but maybe that doesn't exist. Maybe it's actually about just sharing your music with the world, knowing that you're very prolific and knowing that you can take either two minutes or two years to finish something. There are sort of things I put in place to try and make that a bit more of a process. So when I come to my own stuff, I'm quite anal about it. But I'm in a group with Quake and Joe, called Arm Quaaludes, and that's just sort of like, that is literally that. We'll get into a session and we've written the thing already because we just did it in one day. We just played everything, just jammed for time. I was like, that bit, that bit, that bit, that bit. That's an EP, cool, done. You know, and I think in that space, when, when you're sharing that space with two other people who are of that same mindset, so with their own stuff, they're like, they've got their own processes. But when they're all together, we can just knock out whatever it is. But I'm getting into more like that, and I'm going to do a few sort of like no-named releases, just me and my brother and me and a few other guys and just put it out. And don't even say like when it comes to PR, don't even say that we did it. Just it would be the the thing that was named and it'll be one record or whatever. No. <laughs> Music first and then we'll probably make some kind of banter name after. <laughs> <laughs> my, my brother's in a band called Wound, Warm Dusha, and I was just like, what does that mean? He's like, yeah, it means warm shower uh, in German. I was like, right. <laughs> That's a pretty banter name, isn't it? Like, <laughs> in the moment, you know. But yeah, so I'd probably be one of those kind of vibes, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we're not going to get a firm date out of you because we want to put you on record. No. It's not going to happen. 
No. <laughs> That's all right. That's cool. Um, any last questions from you guys? Thoughts? Ruli, thank you so much, man. It's been sick. Sound, thank you for having me, man. Um, as I, pr I'll, I'll do a little, another little planned, more planned process. Uh, just a very, very small one. Um, and then, yeah, I'll be at the bar, have a drink and chat about beachy stuff. <laughs> Is that a question? Sorry, I have a question. Oh, sorry. Your three favorite records. <laughs> my three favorite my three favorite my three favorite records. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I've got to look on my I feel like I've got to look on my phone. <laughs> oh. At, well, at the moment I can't say of all time because there's different moods, different times. Right now, John and Bat, let it happen. If you haven't heard that record nasty, proper like brotherhood. He's not even really that known in London that well, but he's fucking sick. To be honest, uh, Mind Design put me onto him and he was like, you don't know him? You guys are basically on the same thing. You c and when I heard it, I was like, oh my God. So let it happen, John Bat. That is a definite. Um, on the spot vibes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need to look at my phone because I've got. Oh, you know what? Frank Ocean, Channel Orange. That has definitely got to get in there because that is just such a versatile uh, record. Uh, let me think. Um, ah, actually, yeah, one of my favorite albums, uh, kind of kind of random, is the first Slipknot album. Actually, Slipknot album. That is. That is definitely one of my favorite albums, yeah. Thought I'd throw it in there, you know, just as a, like a, <laughs> as I said, different times, different feelings, you know. So there's a little hip hoppy one, there's a sort of like poppy one, there's a metal one, basically. Yeah, but you know, but, but why though, is because the second tune, there's a tune called Eyeless on there, and the whole intro is just jungle. And I was being like 15 listening to that, I was like, <laughs> There's like jungle metal. <laughs> what? <laughs> so yeah, that that yeah, I really 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 took a lot from that. Mm, yeah, that yeah, sounds. No worries, man. Are we good? Yeah, sure. Okay, give it up one more time, man. Thank you, man. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Okay, stick around. We've still got open CDR. All your submissions that you um, gave us, um, Ollie's going to take it out for the next hour or so. So, and also make yourself known to other people because we're all like minds here. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. Yeah.